Welcome to the Explorer's Guide to Western Australia, Episode 7. In this part of the series, we're going to head north, away from Perth, along the west coast, all the way up to Exmouth and the Ningaloo Reef. In future episodes, we'll go from Exmouth, all the way along the northwest coast, up to the Kimberley region, and reach Kununurra, just a few kilometres from the border with the Northern Territory. In the final episode, we'll travel down the Great Northern Highway from the iron ore port of Port Hedland back to Perth. The first stop on this very long journey is the Pinnacles. You're going to start clocking up some distances if you intend to follow this entire route. And the first lake from Perth to the Pinnacles is just under 200 kilometres. The Pinnacles are located in Nambung National Park. And as with most national parks, there is an entry fee. The 4.5 kilometre track that you drive through to explore the park is rather narrow. So anyone towing a caravan or trailer has to drop them off at the car park. Keep your eyes open for wildlife as you explore the park. You might see kangaroos, lizards and other creatures. And there are pink and grey galahs that seem to love sitting on top of the limestone structures. After the long drive from Perth and exploring Nambung, it might be a good idea to find somewhere to spend the night. After leaving the Pinnacles, you'll return to Indian Ocean Drive and head north through the small fishing settlement of Cervantes. Not that long ago, the small towns along this section of coast were relatively isolated and there was no road running right along the coast. The Indian Ocean Drive has linked all these small towns and with it came more development and many more visitors to the area. The next town north of Cervantes is the much larger settlement of Durian. This is a good spot to refuel and restock if there's anything you forgot to buy in Perth. About 12 kilometres north of Durian is the turn off to Sandy Cape. This is an excellent campsite for anyone travelling in a motorhome or camper van. The next town will be Green Head, and not far north of that is another really good campsite located at Milligan's Island. Next comes the little town of Lehman. Between this and the end of Indian Ocean Drive are several other good campsites that include Nobby Head, Freshwater and Cliff Head. North of Cliff Head, you'll reach the Brand Highway, where you turn west and then gradually turn north to Dongara. Dongara is a great place to stop and relax for a while. Head down to the harbour at Port Denison and stop for lunch while you enjoy the view. Check out the heritage buildings in town and you can sample the treats at the local bakery before heading back onto the highway. You're now well on the way to Geraldton, which is the biggest regional centre on the west coast north of Perth. Before you arrive, however, look out for central Greenough on the east side of Brand Highway. This used to be called Greenough Hamlet and is a restored settlement that was once abandoned. Take the opportunity to stop and take a walk through the old historic settlement. There are some wonderful old buildings here, and plenty of memorabilia. There's also a cafe to have a bite to eat and a drink, before moving on to Geraldton. Geraldton doesn't immediately come to mind as a major tourist destination, but there are a few things here that are worth checking out. The St Francis Xavier Cathedral in the heart of town is a very impressive building. It was designed by the famous architect Monsignor John Cyril Hawes. Even if you're not religious, this is a very interesting building to visit, and certainly one of the places in Geraldton we suggest you see. Right on the foreshore, you'll find the Museum of Geraldton. There are guided tours of the museum each day at 11.30am, and you'll get much more from your visit if you join one of these tours. Check out the museum website for more information about opening times as it does close on a number of public holidays. 
There's a link below in the description. Another place of interest in Geraldton is the HMAS Sydney Memorial. The HMAS Sydney sank with all hands after a fight with the German raider Cormoran during World War II. The actual cause of her loss and the location of her wreck site was a mystery until she was finally located in 2008. The red and white striped Point Moore Lighthouse is one of the most iconic buildings in Geraldton and a nearby picnic area is a popular stopping place. Geraldton is the last place you'll find all the big supermarkets until you reach Caratha. So if you need to resupply, now would be a good time to stock up. Not far north of Geraldton is another good campsite at Coronation Beach. It's not far off the highway and there's a seal road all the way to the beach. Until now, your journey from Perth has been mostly over flat ground, at least relatively so. As you head further north from Geraldton, there are a series of hills and the picturesque scenery of the Chapman Valley. Just 39 kilometres north of Geraldton, you'll reach the town of Northampton. Here, you'll find some interesting church buildings, with John Hawes being the designer of the Catholic Church. There's a nice little park here where you'll find toilets and even a tap where you can collect drinking water if you need some in your motorhome or camper van. From Northampton, we're going to turn west towards the coast and Port Gregory. This is an optional detour that will take us all the way up to Calbarry and the stunning coast in that area. It will add quite a few kilometres to your drive, but we highly recommend it as there's a lot to see and do. On the way to Port Gregory, you'll pass the Linton Convict Depot and the old Sandford Homestead up on a hill around the corner. It's worth stopping here to have a wander around the old buildings. Back on the road, and if you're there at the right time, the next thing you're going to encounter is a bright pink lake. The lake varies in colour at different times of year and even at different times of the day. And according to sources, the best time to see it is when the sun is high in the sky. You can call into Port Gregory just to have a look round, but there isn't much to see here apart from the beach and the offshore reef that protects it. A further 67 kilometres north is the town of Calbarry. But before you reach that, you'll enter the Calbarry National Park. Here, a series of signs will point to attractions along the coast, and they are all worth exploring. If it's getting late in the day, staying a couple of nights in Calbarry might be a good choice, as you can come back and explore the National Park the following day. Calbarry started its life as a fishing settlement, and it's located at the mouth of the Murchison River. Today, it's a very popular tourist destination, both for its location on the river and the wonderful countryside and coastline that surround it. Northeast of town are a series of scenic gorges where you can walk and explore at your leisure. The Skywalk is a fairly new attraction that's bringing more and more visitors to the area. If you have time, go and see all the different lookouts and gorges northeast of town in the National Park. If you chose not to do this optional section, then you will have driven north from Northampton and will reach the Calbarry turnoff. And that's where we will start the rest of this journey. Another 20 kilometers will bring you to the Murchison River and Galena Bridge. There is a large overnight rest area here with toilets. You can stay overnight if you need to have a rest. Now it's just a long drive to the Shark Bay turnoff. And the only signs of civilization along the way will be the roadhouses. Here you can stop, grab some food, have a drink and refuel your vehicle. The Billabong Roadhouse has long been the cheapest place to refuel on this stretch of road. But there are two roadhouses right next to each other. 
The original Billabong Roadhouse is generally a lot cheaper than the Newcomer, so make sure you check the prices here before you refuel. From Billabong, keep going north to the Shark Bay turnoff. Here again you have a choice. Either you can continue north and miss Shark Bay altogether, or you can drive up the peninsula to Denham and see some really amazing coastline. Of course, we suggest you take the detour. The first point of interest along the road to Denham is Hamlin Pool. Here you'll find a caravan park and access to the shoreline where a colony of stromatolites still exists. These ancient life forms are partly responsible for changing the atmosphere so that other life like us could develop. They aren't terribly interesting to look at though. In fact, they look like a bunch of old rocks. But as someone once said, it isn't the sight of stromatolites that's exciting. It's the idea of them. The next stop will probably be Shell Beach, where millions upon millions of tiny shellfish have died over time and have covered the shore several metres deep. The compacted shell has even been quarried and used as building material. There's a restaurant in Denham that's made of these, so keep your eye out for that while you're in town. The next turn off is to Steep Point, and this is an area for experienced four-wheel drivers. We don't recommend that anyone who isn't experienced and well prepared heads out that way. We'll continue north on the Shark Bay Road towards the town of Denham. Along the way, there are a series of turnoffs to interesting places along the coast. There's also campsites here, but you must book in advance with the local shire if you want to stay overnight. Other accommodation and caravan parks are available in Denham, and also at Monkey Mire. Denham is the only proper town on the Shark Bay Peninsula. North of Denham is the Francois Perron National Park, but if you visit, you're going to need a well-equipped four-wheel drive. There are campsites here as well. And again, you'll need to pre-book in order to secure a spot. Monkey Mire lies on the east side of the peninsula and is world famous for the pod of dolphins that regularly visit the beach. If you're lucky, you might catch the dolphins when they come in to visit. You can also book boat tours here on one of the large catamarans that operates from Monkey Mire. If you go on a boat tour, you might just be lucky enough to see a dugong or other marine creatures that inhabit the area. Shark Bay isn't called that for nothing, so always be alert if you swim here. There's only been one recorded fatal shark attack here, but it's always best not to take risks. The Shark Bay area is a natural wonderland and has some absolutely stunning scenery. Nature-based camping here is very popular and it would take several days to explore the peninsula properly. It's a little over 100 kilometres from the Overlander Roadhouse to Denham, so this isn't a short detour. But we're sure you won't be disappointed if you make the effort to go. Back down on the highway and heading north once more, you'll pass the Wurramel Roadhouse. And about 33 kilometres south of Carnarvon, you'll pass the turn-off to Bush Bay and New Beach. If you don't mind driving on corrugated unsealed roads, then you might consider going in to have a look at these popular campsites. If not, then keep heading north until you reach Carnarvon. Carnarvon is well known for its fruit and vegetables and for its prawn fishery. If you look around, you'll usually be able to find roadside fruit and veggie stalls, where you can buy fresh produce at much cheaper prices than in the shops. The town sits at the mouth of the Gascoigne River. At 155 kilometres in length, the Gascoigne is the longest river in Western Australia, but for most of the time, it's dry. It's often called the Upside Down River. There is plenty of water here, but unless there are substantial rains in the area, it very rarely flows above ground. Things to check out while you're in town include the Heritage Precinct on the coast, 
Sadly, the long jetty that used to stick out into the ocean is no longer there. But there are still some interesting historic buildings and exhibits to see. As you drive into Carnarvon from the south, you will have noticed the large OTC dish that sits on top of a ridge on the east side of the road. Nearby is the Space Museum, where you can find out more about Carnarvon's connection to space exploration. Heading north from Carnarvon, you'll pass the turn-off to the Blowholes and Point Quabba. Again, if you have time, this is worth the side trip, as there is a campsite at Quabba, and the Blowholes are worth visiting if the ocean is producing big enough waves. You can also go up to the lighthouse here and get a good view of the surrounding area. You can camp at Point Quabba, and there are other camping options available at Quabba Station, Red Bluff and Nalu. Back on the highway, we continue north, until we reach Manilia Roadhouse. There is a rest area just south of the river, but again, the river itself is seasonal and is dependent on heavy enough rain in order to flow. Not far north of the roadhouse is the turn off to Exmouth. This is yet another optional turn on your route, as you can just keep going north towards Karatha. But if you don't go to Exmouth, you're going to miss some really good stuff. The road to Exmouth takes you first to the Coral Bay Turnoff. This is one of the places on the coast where the coral reef comes within metres of the beach. And you can easily swim here to enjoy the reef and its creatures. Coral Bay is really all about Ningaloo Reef. Whether you're swimming, snorkelling, viewing the reef from a glass bottom boat, swimming with whale sharks, or taking a fishing charter, it's a place you will never forget. If you want to stay at Coral Bay, then booking ahead is absolutely essential. This is one of the most popular places on the coast, and accommodation here is in high demand. It's another 150 kilometres from Coral Bay to Exmouth. The Northwest Cape is a very special place, and right along the western side, is the marine park of Ningaloo. The reef is world famous and it's one of the largest fringing reefs in the world. Unlike the Great Barrier Reef in Queensland that can be up to 30 kilometres offshore, Ningaloo reaches right into the shallows and hugs the coast. The Cape Range National Park offers unparalleled beachside camping and sightseeing and this is one of the most amazing places you can visit in WA. Driving round the top end of the Cape from Exmouth, you'll pass the Vlaming Head Lighthouse. From there, you can get a good view of the northern tip of the Cape, and the massive aerials that are part of the Naval Communications Station. There's a good caravan park at Yardi Station, and a boat launching facility at nearby Tantabidi. Not far south of Tantabidi, you'll enter the National Park. The coastline here is mind-numbingly beautiful, and there are many places to camp and explore. Just inland from the coast is Cape Range. It rises up and contains many spectacular canyons. Two of the most easily accessible are Charles Knife and Shot Hole, but they're only accessible from the eastern side of the Cape. The sealed road through the National Park leads you past Mangrove Bay, Ned's Camp, Mesa, Tulkey Beach, Turquoise Bay, Oyster Stacks, North Mandu, Currajong, Sandy and Osprey Bays, and finally to Yardi Creek. The coastal track continues south from here, but it's unsealed and suitable only for four-wheel drive vehicles. If you intend to continue south, you have to cross Yardi Creek, and this can only be done when the river mouth is closed. The sandbar here is usually easy to cross as long as the river is not flowing. When you've finished exploring the Exmouth area, you will drive south to Burkett Road and take the shortcut back to the Northwest Coastal Highway. We will pick up the journey from here in our next video.